Hi, I'm Rick. I'm Tom. And I'm Joel from Australia. Joel, you came from a long, long ways away. Indeed. And you're going to talk with us a little bit about the printed apparel market, decorated apparel market in Australia. Yeah. What do you deal with? What goes well? What doesn't go well? What are your issues? Tell us about it. It's interesting. It's very different over here. The time I've spent over here, I've spoken with people and spoken, you know, with people who have big shops and people who have not so big shops, but it seems that there's a lot of large volume stuff over here. People still print in America, in Australia, big volume stuff. It goes to China and no one, no one really prints in Australia. You get above 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 pieces and it goes offshore to the Chinese and that's what they do. So we spend our time doing a lot of smaller size jobs, so 50 pieces, 100 pieces, 250 pieces. And, and we've built our business on the internet, so we've marketed ourselves online from day one sort of thing, which wasn't my original idea. I was just going to put an ad in the yellow pages, but someone said I'll give the internet a try in 2007, and mm -hmm. I thought that was crazy. But yeah, and so and it's we, worked well. Yeah, we market to the end user through search engine optimization and advertising and just being cool people, I guess. People, because when people are the end users are looking for t-shirts, quite often they don't know what the heck they're doing. And so, oh, what's, really? And what, what's the I think we have that problem in the United States as well. What is uh, the, uh, what's the purchasing mindset? Is it all about price, price, price in Australia? Do they seem to have a good understanding of the quality over? Look, it is initially, I think, but the way we've trained our staff in service and everything is to get past that very quickly and, and tell them what to expect if you want the cheapest product and what to expect if you want a good product and what to expect if you want good service because people in our industry, uh, when they want to pay the least for a product, they get the service that goes along with that sure. uh, and that's rubbish. And it is, it, it's infiltrated our industry of a bunch of backyard people who don't want to print anymore for their boss, so they go out and start a business. And, you know, so we saw a massive hole there, so we started selling service instead of t-shirts. And so we help people through the process of, you know, oh, I think I want some t-shirts printed to, man, I've got this awesome t-shirt in my hand and these people help me out, they're awesome. So. And aside from just service, uh, you do have the technical side down. I've seen a lot of the work that you do. Uh, what's been the key to your success on the technical side of things? Uh, say in the past year, what have you done anything that's really revolutionized the shop? Yeah, look, I'm just a real perfectionist, and I have the belief that if we're not trying to be the best at what we do, then there's no point being in business. So. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of stuff available in Australia, uh, not a lot of supplies, not a lot of knowledge, not a lot of people willing to share their knowledge, so I've had to look abroad for that and I've been lucky enough to meet some awesome people in the industry who shared their knowledge and shared their experience and, and their technical know-how and we've been able to take that back. So. You know, things like starting to use S-Mesh and, and using, you know, not trying to get massive tension on our screens, but using S-Mesh with lower tensions and, and also using the right squeegees and the right inks and putting that all together as our printers thank us every day now that we're using 60 drummer squeegees with S-Threads and they have to pull the ink once and, you know, they're not having to print three times to try and force it through the mesh. And, you know, that's awesome and they love us for it because we still do a bunch of stuff on manual presses. So. What about artwork and development? You do all of that in-house? Um, no, so we basically print um, what our clients send us. So okay. we have a, a design service that we offer from time to time and, um, and if people request that and we make it available to people. But quite often people come to us past that stage where they like, I've got my artwork, I'm looking to get my t-shirts printed. So we do all the pre-press stuff in-house and print film and all that sort of stuff in-house. But as far as the design stuff goes, that's usually brought to us by the clients who already know what they're after. So basically I have two questions. Yep. In the market that you're serving, one is uh, what kind of things do you do to make the quick turn in terms of uh, you know 50 piece job after 50 piece job? Yep. And then where does the back end come from where the, all the information about you know, when you do that many small jobs, there's a lot of information to keep track of. Is that something that you have to do on a proprietary basis or is that something off the shelf or something that, you know, a hybrid of that? Yeah, look, we're actually, <laughs> we just sat down and spoke with someone for about half an hour then about that very thing. So as far as the information flow goes, it's a big challenge we had. Um, obviously doing lots and lots of small jobs, it increases you and opens you up to a lot of risk because you're touching a different job every half an hour or something like that, which means you can get something wrong a good very day. easily. Yeah. On a good day. <laughs> um, so we, we built software systems. Um, 
from day sort of then my second year in business we built a software system but then it was just me and maybe two or three other people mm-hmm. so we've grown to sort of we have 11 staff now and we're doing over a million dollars a year of stuff that system just doesn't cut it anymore so we've added and got spreadsheets and just clunked it all on it's a bit of a frankenstein mess at the moment yeah, it but sounds like it. <laughs> it, it serves our purposes right. and the flow of information but we're looking to either develop something from scratch or find a um a, a ready to go software that will work for us but we find with the way we do things it's a bit of a software's a round hole and we're this square peg and we're trying to stuff us selves in there but trying to find developers that know our industry and, and are aware of the challenges we face is also very difficult so so yeah, yeah software is a big thing and, and yeah the one thing that we have done is we've got really good systems procedures everyone's trained mm-hmm. thoroughly and and so we all know procedures you know that you'd be surprised the amount of shops out, out there that aren't proceduralized not systemized and you know it, it's a it's a tribal training method where joe tra- um, trains john and it goes down the chain. So we got really good training and really that's good cool. systems. That's very unusual, I and think. And that sort of thing, so, yeah. Now, right. uh, one other thing I think uh, I find interesting, it's a common trend among screen printers, and I guess it's not uh, just a domestic thing, but um, I know that we both have experience working with our wives, and I know you work with your lovely that's wife. That's right. <laughs> what is it, and how does it work? It's a challenge, I'll be mm-hmm. honest with you. Uh, it's good, it's awesome, because, I mean, we complement each other in a really great way she's good at the stuff that i'm not so good at and i'm good at the stuff that she's not so good at so uh she's great with management and staff and that sort of thing and she runs the day-to-day operations whereas i'm horrible at that sort of stuff and um, i'm the thinker and the the um the you know come up with the marketing strategies and that sort of stuff so so that's really good but that's honestly, good that she thinks you're a visionary and not a layabout <laughs> no, oh, look, it, it does the, the lines are blurred sometimes you know what i mean what you do you do life. all day she <laughs> says uh, and i'm just uh, in the office above her so she still wonders what i do all day yeah. but i mean it's a challenge because then we go home and we're together all night and, and it's it's 24 7 sort of thing so you know it's good being able to talk to people who are close to us you know both of us about stuff you know mm-hmm. without getting too deep it's like sometimes we just need are you to... able to shut it off when you go home do you talk about work oh, i'm good at that okay um, she's not not so good at that because because she's where i was maybe three or four years ago sure. running the whole thing and mm-hmm. so this stuff's buzzing through her head so mm-hmm. i challenge you to go hey it's home time <laughs> let's just chill out and... okay i've got a question completely off the screen yes. printing how do I decipher the New, England, uh, New Zealand accent from the Australian accent? Uh, it's all in the vowels. It's in the vowels. Give they, us an example. So, okay, we'll say fish and chips. They'll say fish and chips. Oh, <laughs> oh um, that's a good one. Okay. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I'm trying to think the of some other words on the fly. Right. Yeah, it's just all in the vowels. Well, I thought you were going to say you speak properly and they don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we could have used that. We speak proper Australian. Yeah. Mate. <laughs> all right. Um, Very good. Hey, thanks a lot, man. No worries. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. As always, thanks, thanks Joel. Thank you.